Coming up on Mountain News this morning, Kentucky State Police have charged a father and son in connection to the Wednesday night hit and run in Bell County. Several Martin County emergency crews educated kids about the dangers of impaired driving in a unique but powerful way. And as man, the Manchester McDonald's burned to the ground the past this past weekend, community members and organizations immediately started thinking of ways of helping the workers who found themselves without a job. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock on April the 12th. It's a Friday, so everybody rejoice in that. Thank you for tuning into Mountain News this morning. Well, Brandon has been keeping an eye on this morning's weather because today could have the ability to drop some rain on us and drop our temperatures as well. Mm -hmm. But going back to yesterday, Brandon, it was a summer preview. Mm -hmm. It really was. We tied the record for yesterday at 85 degrees. Thankfully, it wasn't humid like summertime usually is, but the typical summertime pattern back this morning. Let's take a look at satellite radar loop the last six hours, and we're going to continue to see again a little bit of rain starting to come in from the west. We're going to also see as a statewide view here. We see all that rain coming off a cold front, but again, I think it's hitting some drier pockets of air and we'll start to break up just a little bit we're going to keep an eye on throughout the morning. Temperatures in the upper 60s and close to 70 as you head through the first part of your day. So very mild, no jackets needed, but you might want to take that umbrella with you this morning. Look at that south wind still continuing to crank. 13 miles an hour, Williamsburg, 14 in Somerset, 16 in Wise, pulling all that warm air in for now. But it's going to start to shift here in the next couple of days, and it's going to bring us down just a little bit. But today, we stay there in the 60s and 70s pretty much all day, getting it to about 74 and stabilizing this afternoon. But those rain chances also around throughout the day off and on. I'll have the rest of the forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Will? We continue to follow a developing story this morning here in Perry County. State police are investigating after a body was found overnight. We are told some people riding ATVs discovered the body in the Viper community. There's not much information right now, but we do know officials are sending the body to the state medical examiner's office for identification and to learn the cause of death. We will update this story as we learn more here on the air and on WYMT.com. Well, Kentucky State Police have charged a father and son in connection to the Wednesday night hit and run in Bell County. Police say the hit and run happened on Kentucky Highway 92 East around 8 o'clock Wednesday night. And local 80 Fusion died after being hit by a black four-door car. Troopers arrested 30-year-old Joshua Ellis and his 15-year-old son. They were arrested after being pulled over in a vehicle matching the description from the crash. And we've been working around the clock to figure out exactly uh, what vehicle this was and, and, and get, make some closure for the family uh, because, you know, uh, as of last night, they didn't have any idea who done this. Ellis is being held at the Bell County Detention Center and the 15-year-old son is being taken to a juvenile detention center. Well, state police say someone found human remains in their yard Wednesday night. State police opened a death investigation as a result. Investigators were called around 830 to a home on Harbell Road in Pineville. Police sent the skull they found to the state medical examiner's office in Frankfurt. There, they hope to learn the identity and the cause of death. Well, an update this morning on an injured deputy in a deputy injured in a head on crash Wednesday night. It happened just before 10 Wednesday night on Slate Branch Road outside of Somerset. The sheriff's office says the officer was off duty. That deputy was flown to a hospital. State police are investigating the crash. A Pulaski County Sheriff's Office spokesman said they understand the deputy was conscious and talking and that his injuries are not believed to be life threatening. A Bristol, Virginia police officer is at a local hospital after being hit on the way to an emergency call Thursday morning. Captain Maynard Ratcliffe says the officer was responding to an emergency call with his lights and sirens on. Both the officer and the other driver were taken to Bristol Regional Medical Center for treatment. The cause of the crash is under investigation. No charges have been filed at this time.
Several Martin County emergency crews educated kids about the dangers of impaired driving. Jobs for America's graduates prepared Sheldon Clark High School students for their upcoming prom night with a mock disaster. WIMT's Taylor Upchurch was there for the fake outcome of a night of fun that included underage drinking and driving. In a split second. I actually um, injured and killed multiple people. Like I think about it sometimes, like what if that was me? Sheldon Clark High Schoolers encountered scary consequences for being impaired behind the wheel. A grim reaper claimed several lives, many of their friends whom they would never see or hear from again. It can be that kid that sits beside them in class, or it could be uh, someone that they, you know, high-fived when they were walking down the hallway. For now, it's a mock disaster, but on prom night, this fatal car crash could be reality. If you're being cut out of the car or anything like that, then you're like, wow, this can actually happen to me and not just a maybe. Teachers say no one is invincible. Every decision has a consequence, sometimes even a fatal one, not just for the impaired driver, but for the others on the road. In an accident like that, there's no discrimination. Students say if you're old enough to be behind the wheel. So I just hope they know that it's not something that is can be joked about. Then you're old enough to go to jail. It would just have to feel like such a burden, like a weight on you just to know that you did something like that. Reminding young drivers to never drink underage and to learn to hand over the keys. In Martin County, Taylor Upchurch, WYMT Mountain News. Organizers say there are 54 JAG programs across the Commonwealth. 27 students lose their lives to impaired driving each day. They hope this demonstration helps lead, helps lead to a safe prom this Saturday. Well, as the Manchester McDonald's burned to the ground this past weekend, community members and organizations immediately started thinking of ways of helping the workers who found themselves without a job. About 20 different local organizations, including churches, fire departments, the Tourism Commission, and even the local jail created a fundraiser for them. For $5 a plate, people in the community enjoyed a spaghetti dinner and a concert from the band Bourbon Branch. Employees of the restaurant that burned down say this moment is exactly what a loving community is all about. Well, I really appreciate it and I'm sure everyone else does, you know, the gas cards or whatever. Everything that people have done, it just means the world to us. And we can't wait to get back and get our regular customers and a lot of them to be here tonight. Just about all of the employees who worked at the Manchester McDonald's are now working at one of the several other McDonald's locations in London. The event helped raise almost $1,700. That money will help those employees with their commutes. Rather. The severe winter-like storm that swept over six states this week is being blamed for at least one death. An airline mechanic was killed Wednesday night when his pickup truck hit a snowplow at Denver International Airport. The blizzard is still lingering over parts of the upper Midwest, dropping record snowfall in some places. CBS's Laura Podesta has the latest details. Midwesterners are doing their best to keep up with the sprawling spring blizzard. We just put a band-aid here and a band-aid there and keep working it. I guess I didn't think that we were really going to get this much here in April. Thunder snow in Wisconsin. And Minnesota highlighted the storm's unusual strength. Kind of weird <laughs> when it's snowing. Daily snowfall records were made throughout the region. The 70 degrees earlier this week was much more enjoyable than this. More than two feet of snow blanketed parts of South Dakota. Whiteout conditions forced officials to close Interstate 90 between Rapid City and Sioux Falls. Wow. But ice and wind caused the most damage, knocking out power lines faster than workers could repair them. They've been busy because as soon as you get something fixed, something else pops up. Just over the border in southwest Minnesota, this icy road was too much for one state trooper. Further north, Art's Dairy Freeze is still standing. Our motto is, it's never too cold for ice cream. <laughs> the snow shut them down Thursday, but they'll be serving ice cream today for whoever wants it. The forecast is calling for a high temperature of just 32 degrees. Laura Podesta, CBS News. 
Never too cold for ice cream. What a great motto to live by. Well, elsewhere in the country, Texas, Louisiana and Arkansas are in line for possible severe weather this weekend. Damaging winds, hail and tornadoes are all possible. Well, Hillbilly Days, it began in 1977 and decades later it is still going strong. The festival brings in people from all across the country to the mountains and more importantly, it puts tens of thousands of dollars into the local economy. Jacob Carlos Krager says having a business downtown during Hillbilly Days definitely is a great location to bring in extra cash. You know, going up and down these streets and seeing local shops, but not only local, you see the bigger like Alltech. You get a, you get a little bit of everything in downtown Pikeville. Of course, we will be back in Pikeville today, live through six o'clock this evening. Well, things are fairly quiet this morning for now. As we take a look at the Buffalo Mountain camera here in Perry County, we can see our transmitter lights and our some transmitter lights off in the distance. That's from our transmitter there. And we're looking again at uh, clear skies for now. But as we come back to live pinpoint Doppler radar, some showers and storms trying to fire. We zoom in a little closer. They're moving to the northeast this morning, but you can see one coming into parts of McCreary County and Whitley County there down from the south and east Tennessee. And we're also seeing one slowly trying to pull east northeast there from over toward Lake Cumberland could clip the parts of uh, northern Pulaski into parts of uh, Rock Castle County a little bit later on. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s this morning, so very mild start to the day, but you, see, you can see some cooler air behind at 55 in Owensboro and 53 out toward Paducah. So your planner for today, temperatures stay in the 70s, upper 60s and low 70s, so not a whole lot of movement all day long. Will? All righty, Brandon, thank you, and thank you for joining us right here on Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. If you've ever considered leaving everything behind, well, meet this map. An Oregon police responded to a burglary in progress. They ended up catching the culprit, but it may not be what you think.